Hi, welcome back to the Patch Breakdowns. We missed you. Did you miss me? Stop it, there's no need for that. It's very sweet of you, but we are back with the first Patch Breakdown of Season 12, and boy, is it a big one. Neon, or er, Zeri, Zeri is coming, of course, to League of Legends. Janna is getting a mini rework. Tom Kench support is insane now. And Vagar mid might be back for real. Probably not, though. On top of a whole bunch of other changes to items, runes, and drakes, this patch is thick with three season of Q, so fill up that water bottle, strap in, and make sure you set the right runes. This is the 12.2 patch breakdown. The big news, of course, is that Zeri has arrived. League's first new champion of 2022 is coming to the Rift in this patch. We won't spend any time here going over what she does. Instead, you can check out the video we did introducing her abilities and such right over here. The big one to start off with is that Janna is getting a pretty good size mini rework, which should shift more of her focus as far as her identity and fantasy is concerned into her ability to peel and shield. So here we go. As far as her base stats, her move speed is going from 315 to 330. Her base AD is going from 46 to 71 and a half to 52 to 103, which by extension means that her AD growth per level is doubled from 1.5 to 3 per level. But her basic attack range is going down from 550 to just 500 units. Her passive Tailwind now only gives her her 8% bonus move speed while moving toward ally champions. The bonus move speed that her allies get while moving towards her is remaining unchanged, however. The bonus damage on her basic attacks and her W, Zephyr, that scale off her bonus move speed, are now no more. Her Q, Howling Gale, is getting its mana cost reduced late, going from 60 to 140 mana to 60 to 100 mana. Its minimum and maximum range are going from 1,000 to 1,750 units, now to 1,100 to 1,760. And the time it takes for it to reach its destination is shortening slightly from 1.5 seconds to 1.25 seconds. Her W, Zephyr, is getting its range increased from 550 from edge to edge to 650 centered. The slow duration is going up from 2 to 3 seconds, but its cooldown is getting ratcheted way up from 8 to 6 seconds across all ranks to 12 seconds at all ranks. The base damage on it, however, is going from 55 to 175 to 70 to 190, and the bonus move speed it gives Janna when it's not on cooldown is going from 6 to 10% to 8 to 12%. And remember, some of her abilities, including the additional damage on her W, still do scale off her bonus movement speed. Moving on to her E, Eye of the Storm, it's getting an update to its passive slash innate effect. Whenever Janna's abilities slow or knock up at least one enemy champion, instead of Eye of the Storm's cooldown being reduced by 20%, that's the current effect, now Janna will instead receive plus 20 healed and shielding power for 5 seconds. For reference, that is double what Arden Sensor gives you. As far as it's active, her E's shield amount is going from 80 to 120 plus 70% AP to 80 to 200 plus 65% AP. So a slight nerf, but it's cool that it was going down late to get those aforementioned procs off more often in the late game. It's going from 16 to 12 seconds to 15 to 9 seconds. And finally, the shield decay on that E now starts after 0.75 seconds instead of 1.25 seconds. Very last but not least, Janna's ultimate, Monsoon. Nothing's really happening here. Its healing ticks are going off just more often, once every 0.25 seconds instead of once every half second, but the healing amount itself is staying the same. Sick of all that enchanter talk yet? Good. Here's more. Lulu nerfs. Small one for the Fae Sorceress, her W Whimsy, it's having its cooldown reduced just a bit from 16 to 12 seconds to 17 to 13 seconds. Nocturne is getting changes that VGU is only coming next year, or the year after, or never, but buffs to his Q and his base stats are here now. Nocturne's health growth per level is going from 85 to 95, meaning that his base health now tops out at 2200 instead of 2030. Also, the bonus AD ratio on his Q, Duskbringer, is getting bumped up from 75 to 85%. Kiana is another one of many assassins in the patch notes, and she's getting two nerfs. First, her base health regen is going from 7.5 per second to 6 per second, and the grass-themed version of her Q, Edge of Ixtal, is having its grass trail zone duration reduced from 3.5 seconds to 3 seconds. Rengar is finally getting those long-awaited changes to his ultimate. I hope you're happy, Rengar mains, because I've only played him once in an ARAM and I got confused and frustrated and overwhelmed, so I now avoid him like the plague. Anyways, basically, Ride's thinking was that because of the Chemtech Rift, 12 instances of Brush are just whoosh, gone from the map, which obviously hampers his maximum strength. 
So now his ult, Thrill of the Hunt, is getting a new line of text. It reads as such. Rengar can leap to enemies with his next basic attack when he is in camouflage. This includes, as one might expect, the camouflage from this very ability. Samira is getting her ult damage buffed now before you outright panic, which maybe is fair to do. Let's take a look at the numbers. She's one of many shield bow dependent champions that is getting a buff after the nerfs to the aforementioned item. The physical damage per shot on her ultimate is going from 0 to 20 plus 50% AD to 5 to 15 plus 50% AD, so 5 more base damage per shot. The total damage per target is also going up by 50 base damage at all ranks from 0 to 200 to 50 to 250 while maintaining that plus 500% AD ratio. Yes, that was in fact always there. Sen is getting some buffs after the removal of Glacial Augment's old effect. May it rest in peace. It will live on, however, as an innate part of Senna's already immensely complex auto attacks. Senna's basic attacks now slow enemies by 20%, plus 6% per 100 AP, plus 10% per 100 bonus AD for 2 seconds. Shen nerfs! The teleport changes mean that Shen gets insane value out of his ultimate, and that's actually not really the issue according to Riot, but rather that the other, less quintessentially Shen parts of his kit are too strong as a result. He does too much. So the increased bonus magic damage on his Q, Twilight Assault, so the part that procs only if the Spirit Blade hits someone on its way to Shen is going from 10 to 40 plus 6 every 3 levels plus 5 to 7% plus 2% per 100 AP of the target's max health to 10 to 40 plus 6 every 3 levels plus 4 to 6% plus 2% plus per 100 AP of the target's max health. A lot of numbers for one part of one ability, jeez. Top catch is back in the patch notes and this one is a doozy, get ready. So after that mini rework, basically support Tom Kench has been too weak in non-pro play, and kind of in pro play too, but otherwise he's right where Riot wants him. This is a big swing and buff. The enemy slow on his Q, Tongue Lash is going from 40 to 50%, and the amount of damage stored into gray health on his E, Thick Skin, is going from 45 to 65% to 15 to 55%, but it's increased back to that original 45 to 65 if there are two or more visible enemy champions nearby, ready, dead, or alive. The amount of healing restored from his gray health is going from 30 to 100% from levels 1 to 18 to 45 to 100% from levels 1 to 18. Finally, his ult, Devour. This is the big one. The ally shielding upon being devoured is going from 400 to 600 plus 100% AP to 500 to 900 plus 150% AP. And that's not even the craziest part in my opinion. When Tom Kench swallows an ally, normally he's slowed by 30, 20, or 10% depending on the rank of his ult when he has a homie in his mouth. Now he gains 40% move speed for 3 seconds regardless of how long he has had his ally swallowed. Talon is having the damage that his W rake deals to monsters reduced from 130% of its value to just 105%. Tristana is getting some buffs because apparently we miss her already. The base health is going from 559 to 600 and her base health regeneration is going from 3.75 health per second to 4. Vagar is attempting to be shoved back into the mid lane and personally I'm excited. By the way, it's at Henrique Demore on Twitter for when this blows up in my face. You can at me. The cooldown on his Q is being buffed from 7 to 5 seconds to 6 to 4 seconds, and the stacks of phenomenal evil it gives when it kills a large monster or a minion is going from 2 to 3. Volibear has been relatively low on the pecking order for a while, so Riot is giving him a few buffs. What's the point of all those skins if no one plays him, am I right? The base AD growth per level he gets is going from 3 to 3.5 per level, meaning that his base AD at level 18 will now be 119.5 instead of 111. Also, and probably more significantly, the cooldown on his E, Sky Splitter, is getting reduced from 15 to 13 seconds. Yasuo, in another instance of a shield bow abuser being thrown some charity, is having the AD ratio on his Q, Steel Tempest, raised from 100 to 105% AD, with the base damage remaining the same. Yone is getting a similar helping hand because they, and these are Riot's words here, had to do the same for Yone to make sure he didn't fall behind in the sibling rivalry. Again, it's a buff to the AD ratio on his Q, Mortal Steel, and it's also going from 100% to 105% of his AD, with the base damage staying the same. And finally, Zed nerfs. Just one, but it's to his ult, Deathmark. The damage is going from 100% of his AD to just 65% of his AD, with the bonus damage, the part that comes from how much damage you deal to the target while it's active, staying the same across all ranks. Whew, that was a lot, but it's much easier from here on out. To items we go, and there are just two of them. Lichbane is getting some buffs that should make it friendlier to AP users. 
The total cost is unchanged, but its build path is not. Instead of Blasting Wand plus Aether Wisp plus Sheen plus 600 gold, it is now a Fiendish Codex plus Aether Wisp plus Sheen plus 550 gold. And that means, for those of you keeping score at home, yes, Lich Bane now gives Ability Haste, 15 to be exact. The Spellblade damage is getting its power shifted from 150% of your base AD plus 40% of AP to just 75% of your base AD, but now plus 50%. AP. The cooldown of the Spellblade proc is also going down a decent amount, from 2.5 seconds to just 1.5 seconds. Rylai's Crystal Scepter is getting some love. Wow, remember that item, non-singed players? The goal here, according to Riot, is to focus its target audience to just more tanky AP users. To start, its cost is getting slashed from 3,000 gold to just 2,600, and that's all coming out of its combined cost, which was 815 gold, but is now just 415. It is losing 15 AP, going from 90 to 75, but it's getting some health in return, 50 to be exact, going from 350 to 400. Couple of jungle changes before you go, the Chemtech Soul is being nerfed, even though everyone loves it so much. The zombie health it gives is going from 80% of your base health plus 50% of your bonus health to 70% of your base health plus 40% of your bonus health. The base duration of the zombie, so without any other health impacting factors, is going down as well from 4 to 3 seconds. The Chemtech Rift is also getting some changes. As it stands right now, the Camouflage Timer checks if you've made any offensive moves in the last 1.5 seconds upon entering the fog, but now it'll check that every 2.5 seconds. Also, the bonus damage that the fog gives against enemies with more current health than you is going up from up to 10% to up to 12%. The Hextech Dragon Soul is also getting nerfed. The Chain Lightning True Damage is going from 25 to 75 based on level to 25 to 50 based on level. One rune change in this patch, and it seems like it'll be a welcome one. It's a nerf to lethal tempo, and here's how it's shaking out. It'll be worse early and slightly better late. The attack speed per stack for melee champions is going from a flat 13% to 10 to 15% scaling from levels 1 to 15, after which it stops scaling. Similarly, for ranged champions, instead of 7% per stack forever, each stack is instead giving you anywhere from 5 to 9% across levels 1 to only 12, after which it also stops scaling. Our Earth is back as well on January 26th, and the Porcelain and Firecracker skin lines will be available for purchase later on. Porcelain Ezreal, Lissandra Amumu Kindred Lux and its Prestige Edition, as well as Firecracker Set Diana, Timo Tristana, Zin Zhao, as well as a Brave Phoenix Zaya Prestige Edition, and Zeri's first skin, Wither Rose Zeri. For all the other chromas, bug fixes, quality of life changes, VFX updates to a bunch of Sona and Vayne skins, and anything else we might have missed, check out the link in the description below. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date. And as always, I've been Henrique Demore. Thank you for watching.